With the off-season elections now over, it is back to work for respective governments across the country. The Lagos State Governor is back in town and showing that the dividends of a democracy promised to the people are delivered as he continues to look towards the 2023 elections when he will be on the ballot for re-election. Marking three years since the Babajide Saolu administration took office is the purpose of the special prayers at the Central Mosque. <laughs> Prayers are followed by a special service at the Chapel of Lights Church. To praise the name of the Lord and to give it thanks and praise for His goodness, His mercy, and His favor upon us and especially on this day. With the year left to the end of the administration, the message from Mr. Governor is for continued support from all stakeholders. The success recorded so far was made possible through our collective efforts and prayers. I am therefore using this opportunity to implore you to continue to stand in the gap for our dear state and the nation. Most importantly, as we approach the 2023 general election. For the deputy governor, Lagos cannot afford to be divided by religion when there are several challenges that stare its residents in the face. I'm a Muslim and I'm a very proud Muslim. But in my relationship with my God is between me and my God. My relationship with the mosque, Imams, is to seek knowledge. Because there is no way I can know everything as a human being. We shouldn't politicize everything, especially religion. It's sacred and it's a relationship between man and God. It speaks a lot louder than verbal campaigns are the works that you have done in the time that you were there. People will complain, but they can see too. And people know what is good when they see. So what people can do, religious leaders, is to tell us how it is. What does God say about A? What does God say about B? I'm not talking about personal opinion. I'm talking about interpreting the scripture the way it should be, whether you're a Muslim or whether you're a Christian. It's a time for them to also reflect as the khutbah had alluded. It's a time for the government to reflect on how much they have been able to do in the time they had. And look at where are the other places they could have done better, or where are the other places they should have touched. With the recent judgment supporting the use of hijab in schools, residents look forward to respect for the rule of law and justice for all. With cases of urban migration leading to the death of several people around the world, the conversation around refugees and migrants have dominated several global international discourse in recent times. The World Refugee Day is dedicated to underscore the vulnerability of such refuge seekers and the importance of government at all levels to avail them care and warmth, having chosen to leave their places of birth. Today we are asking people to remember the importance of welcoming newcomers into their communities. Those who have been forced to, br to flee bring more than just a bundle of clothes if they are lucky. They come with so much more. The Global Compact is not legally binding but it represents the political will and ambition of the international community as a whole for a strengthened cooperation and solidarity with refugees and host countries. We encourage countries around the globe to provide more funding for unmet humanitarian needs. And we also call on private sector entities to see what more they can do for the forcibly displaced. According to the Federal Ministry of Human Affairs, this year's celebration and the subsequent recognition of Lagos as a city with refugees underscores the role Nigeria has played for refuge and asylum seekers from across the continent and the world. Nigeria is host to 84,000 refugees and asylum seekers. Cross River State alone hosts 41,000 of them. Most of the refugees reside in Cross River, Akwaibom, Taraba, Benue, Lagos State, Kano, and Borno State. The signing underscores the place of refugees, asylum seekers, stateless persons, and all persons of concern in the heart of the executive governor of Lagos State. Because they have always been particular about um, the persons of concern under his leadership. Also, to further provide support to persons of concern and build resilience, the Honorable Minister of Management Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development 
have graciously approved the capturing of persons of concern, especially IDPs and refugees, into the various social investment programs like the JIP, the Empower, the End Skills, and so forth. In 2021, the Honorable Minister of Federal Capital Territory, FCD, Al Haji Mohammed Musabello, signed the Declaration of Abuja as the city with refugees. This was a landmark development. It, is, it underscores the place for refugees and asylum seekers and stateless persons and other persons of concerns in Nigeria. Today, the signing of the Declaration of Lagos as Cities with Refugee by His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Sanwalu, is a defining moment with global significance. The signing underscores the place of refugees, asylum seekers, stateless persons, and all persons of concerns in the heart of the Executive Governor of Lagos State. Office of the United Nations uh, High Commission for Refugees in Nigeria has registered over 82,000 refugees and 1,556 asylum seekers from 34 countries as at 31st of May 2022. Majority are Cameroonians. Uh, with a figure of more than 77,000 and the registration is ongoing. Out of this figure, Lagos State hosts 100 refugees, 1,000 refugees, sorry. The choice of this phrase is apt because in February 2022, the world witnessed what is near calamity when Ukraine was invaded by Russia. There were apparent sh uh, show of discrimination and racism as the black amongst the fleeing population were discriminated against, and Nigerians were included in this. For the governor of Lagos State, the center of excellence being the economic hub of the nation and West Africa means the population of the state will only continue to increase, assuring that there will be no discrimination against anyone. That Lagos continue to remain a land of great opportunity you know, for all, for all. And that's why, as your leader, as your governor, we will continue to provide that ambience, that space for you. No matter your religion, no matter where you come from, no matter what your beliefs are, you know, no matter what your political coloration is. The governor goes on to sign the declaration, further making Lagos conscious of its role in the international space. The 2022 summit by the Ministry of Education is coming with support from the Ministry of Sustainable Development Goals with hopes of addressing the deficits in the education sector and appraising the improvements witnessed in Lagos in the past year. What are the activities that you are going to incorporate? So it's not the teacher lecturing all the time. There must be other activities. Then we have a column for the core skills that are inclusive, the core skills of uh, critical thinking and reasoning, problem solving, creativity, digital literacy, collaboration and teamwork, and of course, personal leadership. We need help with our comprehensive school model, which we're so excited about. We've rolled out 12 in the space of this year, and we're looking to do 50 by the end of the year. But we need to scale to, our, to many, many schools, if not even all our schools. The occasion serves as an opportunity to highlight the need for better quality teachers, by upscaling the existing ones and engaging competent young new ones to train the younger generation for digital economy. We want to have a specialized feeding process to help train our teachers to help feed the system. We have private schools over 18,000, we have public schools over 1,000. We must be sure that those that will come and teach these students are well good for the purpose. We have Lexplo, the real reason why we've come here today. Literacy Attainment Coach, where we're able to use artificial intelligence, eye tracking, to determine the level of reading for children. For the Deputy Governor, the state and nation is in need of specialists. He notes that the influx of commercial motorcycle riders cannot benefit the country when infrastructural development is the direction the current and future administrations will invest heavily in. I was commissioner for works when we were building the, the link bridge, the lucky link bridge. And Julius Badger, the contractor, could not find 70 welders in Nigeria. That's where we started the extended welding in Igodo. Now, they were all picked up by all companies, Chevron, Shell, and the rest. And the minimum salary, and I'm talking 2013, the minimum salary was 750000 a month. So, if you impute in us, it is for your home good and for our home good. The state government revealed it invested 1.1 billion naira 
to finance the fees for the West African Certificate Examination in 2022, promising to do even more to afford other underprivileged students an opportunity towards success. The collapse of a 21-story building in Lagos in 2021 came as a huge shock to residents, with the casualty figure of 45 people drawing attention to a pertinent issue across the state. The state government subsequently set up a six-man panel that investigated the collapse of the structure owned by Messrs. Four Score Heights. One of the recommendations was for the other building within the same vicinity to be brought down, having both failed integrity tests as the state looks to enforce that recommendation. What the government was concerned about, he was to find out the reasons for the failure structurally and come up with um, recommendations to avoid such incidents in future. And for us to be able to do this, we have uh, searched far and wide and we have uh, really put so many things on the table before we came to the conclusion. However, in order to prevent another incident, the state government has opted for a more controlled demolition which will be completed within 90 days. It's to take out those buildings piece by piece as if we are unscrewing every portion and taking them down. So we have a crane, a tall crane above the building and that crane will suspend people on the building so that their weight does not bear too much on that building. There is more though as the state government will confiscate the landed property as is within the ambit of the law when such an incident occurs. The property as, as it is, is forfeited. And on what government is planning to do with the sites? Government has not actually decided but I believe when we come up with what to do with the site, we will let you know and it's going to be a public oriented use. The multi-million dollar investment appears to have come to a complete loss to all those involved as the state government hopes to avoid a recurrence. The 21-story structure situated at 44 BCD Gerald Road in Ikoyi, Lagos had on November 1, 2021 collapsed, killing the owner, Mr. Femi Moshibona and 44 others. wait for the presidential candidates of the ruling All Progressives Congress as governors of Lagos and Imo State, House of Assembly members, party leaders and other former heads of government beckoned on his arrival at the presidential wing of the Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. <laughs> Alatin Abu disembarks and proceeds to the palace of the Oba of Lagos. Oba Ruwana <laughs> thank God for Lagos and I thank God for all my and caveats for the process of decision that brought to of you. And all will be well with all of us. We are equal in the eyes of God, we are not equal in the love of God. What you want are eating now? All our friends from the north shall be too much to be like Yasara. We all return home safely. We see our governor and the deputy. God Almighty Allah will be with him. The visit was, however, marred as the convoy conveying the dignitaries was attacked by hoodlums. The press team was worse affected as the bus conveying the journalist looked a shadow of itself. <laughs> journalist bloodied, requiring medical attention. The Lagos State Governor Abajide Saonlu has called for an investigation into the incident, challenging the state police command to take action against the perpetrators. <laughs>
taking place in Lagos, it is little to no wonder that major stakeholders in various parts of the government are all meeting with the business environment to seek collaborative solutions to the many challenges facing business owners and enterprises across the country. The governor met with the Nigerian Business Association looking to make solutions to some of the lingering challenges in the various areas of Nigeria's economic growth. The Lagos State Governor, Abajide Sonulu, has said that the private sector will have to play a key role if Lagos is to transition from a third world state to an economic mega city. The Governor stated this while meeting with business leaders at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industries on Tuesday. The Governor, while reading out the Lagos State's three year plan, noted that while Lagos State recorded 71% of the entire country's foreign direct investments in the first quarter of 2022, there is still more to do if residents and visitors are to enjoy transacting and improving local production and services. We want to develop a thriving economy. To make Lagos a robust, healthy, growing economy with adequate jobs and strategic investment to sustain growth. This is one of the strongest thematic things that we gave them that we're, that we're bringing back. So a thriving economy. We believe it's important for us to have a sustainable growth path for the next 30 years. The second um, point is a human-centric city. We believe with the 20, 20 something million population or so, every Lagosian will have access to affordable world-class education, healthcare, and social services. And so the dimension for the Lagos Development Plan 2050 are to be achieved via 400 plus policy initiatives that are to be executed over the next 30 years. And so Lagos is hopeful that in the discourse that will lead to the establishment of this new pathway that will facilitate the successful implementation of our 2052 development plan. We're optimistic of having a more robust engagement with stakeholders like yourselves, you know, the LCC, I, and other stakeholders like yourself, wholesale and retail commerce, food, beverages, in all spheres of life. For members of the chamber and other business leaders, responsive and adjustable policies will be a key indicator that any state government is taking key interest. We want to thank you. We will keep on engaging your Office of Overseas Affairs and Investment, the Lagos Global, and several engagements we've had with you in the past on the social purpose institutions that the ones we've established to implement specific mandates in the areas of employment, creation, tax administration, security, and small business empowerment. Our concern about the composition of Nigeria's capital importation is that the proportion of foreign direct investment is at only 9.5% needs special attention and calls for immediate actions towards addressing critical issues affecting our business environment. With an improved business environment, the state can attract capital inflows from Nigerians in diaspora as a more sustainable source of funding for the required infrastructure. The enormity of needs in Lagos State requires the cooperation of both the public and private sector funding and a good mix of foreign direct investment. Um, the first uh, issue has to do with an ongoing conflict between uh, the NMDPRA, which is the Downstream Regulatory Authority, and Lagos State in terms of who manages and regulates the oil and gas space uh, in Lagos. I have received some complaints from the local Chinese community. For example, there might be some land disputes as mentioned by some honorable CEO. I just want the state government, I urge the authorities to protect the Chinese community's legal rights. Some of the infrastructure we try to put in to be able to kind of um, improve on the adoption level. And these two infrastructures are the, the terminal we have at Kirikiri 
I think 8,400 uh, metric tons facility, and then the cylinder plant, manufacturing plant, we have at, uh, towards the Ekbe uh, axis. According to Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, over 41 million women in Nigeria are business owners, many of whom are breadwinners of their respective families. This, according to experts, is a major part of Nigeria's gross domestic product yearly. The Lagos State Government is taking a sensitization campaign to Ikorodu to further encourage more women to partake in small-scale businesses within their locality, thereby providing solutions to basic human needs with a profit to afford their daily expenses. We also realize that when women are economically empowered, there's less tension in the home front and obvious reduction in domestic violence. For some of the tutors and community leaders, convincing other women to learn a trade will become easier when several others are becoming self-sufficient in skills that are resistant to the inflation. The over four weeks has been a very interesting scenario. Most of them came in without any skill, but they are going with a lot of skill and even before leaving the classes, they are already earning a lot of money. I have heard the testimony of somebody that have been able to supply 1,000 banks with our team, those people that they link together. Another person said at the family meeting and group, she's able to sell some soap. So we expected that immediately they commence their work now and be able to earn a living. Mrs. Uluwatoi and Mrs. Kende have taken up new trades, which they say will contribute to the education and sustenance of their children. Even before this, today's graduation, we have been invited to make souvenirs for social functions. We have been making slippers, we have been making school bags, lunch bags, impacting our life financially. You can see what I'm wearing. I, I, I can turn old, your totally faded material. I can turn it into a brand new one with tie and dye. Then I can do batik. When you see, you compare them straight away with what is obtainable in Ghana, in other Af uh, African countries. We should not be, you should not just sit out in, inside and be expecting that daddy will bring money to to cook rice, that will bring money to cook this. If you are able, even if it is egg bro and um, um, puff puff, or you can, you can still be bringing something for yourself. The population figures indicate that there are over 100 million women in Nigeria. Encouraging many more to become engaged will further reduce the health challenges and exposure of young people to crime. Small-scale business owners raised their stand as the Lagos State Government hosts an exhibition for artisans to showcase their products to state officials and potential customers. This comes as stakeholders meet with representatives from the private sector, regulatory agencies and officials present to discuss ways of improving local production in the state. 50% of the non-oil gross domestic products of the country is generated in Lagos State. While 70% of the MSMEs in Nigeria are producers and operate in the state, as to uh, give a conservative estimate. This data no doubt speaks to the positive contributions of the sector to the overall growth of the state's economy. For players in the private sector, showcasing citizens who specialize in Certain crafts is the most effective way for Nigeria to become a major player in any sector. The federal and state governments must continue in building all necessary bridges to connect Nigerian businesses, not only to the African continent, but also to the world. As part of the players in the sector, I think the most needed advancement to the technology and the business model is For the state government, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement will mostly benefit nations and states who have improved their quality and efficiency to serve a larger market, hence the need for healthy rivalry. The advantages of this agreement are quite enormous in the prospect of growing Africa's GDP. By an additional 1 trillion 
governance. That's huge. This small doubt represents a huge opportunity for our MSMEs to explore and take new advantage to promote growth, greater prosperity and development. Outside of the oil sector, the small-scale industry serves as one of the most resistant against the global economic conditions. Leveraging on the local talents and natural resources have to take center stage if Nigeria is to rapidly improve its gross domestic production. With the business community assuring their support to the Lagos State Governor and the Governor assuring that the state will continue to provide an open-door policy for all stakeholders in the industry, Lagos will not just continue to be the economic nerve center of Nigeria but Africa as a continent as the African Continental Free Trade Agreement continues to become a thing of reality. That completes our episode for this week. Until next time, I am Will Sunamoni and this is Lagos. <laughs>